Welcome, everyone. It's so great to see members of Congress here, uh, Senator Reid, so glad you're here, Congressman Swalwell, Congressman Fleischman, uh, Jerry McNerney, thank you so much. Uh, as, well, I don't think um, Congressman Lofgren, is she? Not yet, okay. Um, Connor Lamb, of course, and Jamal Bowman, thank you so much, all of you, for your support of this. And I know there are others who uh, are supportive as well who were not able to make it, but this is a great day. Uh, today, we're here to talk about fusion, combining two particles into one. Last week, at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, scientists at the National Ignition Facility achieved fusion ignition. And that is creating more energy from fusion reactions than the energy used to start the process. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory, anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Or as the president might say, right? I do think he probably did say this is a BFD. <laughs> Researchers at Livermore and around the world have been working on this moment for more than 60 years. So what does this accomplishment do? Two things. First, it strengthens our national security because it opens a new realm for maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deter deterrent in an age where we do not have nuclear testing, ignition allows us to replicate for the first time certain conditions that are found only in the stars and the sun. And the second thing it does, of course, is that this milestone moves us one significant step closer to the possibility of zero carbon abundant fusion energy powering our society. If we can advance fusion energy, we could use it to produce clean electricity, uh, transportation fuels, power heavy industry, so much more. It would be like adding um, a power drill to our toolbox in building this clean energy economy. So today we tell the world that America has achieved a tremendous scientific breakthrough, one that happened because we invested in our national labs and we invested in fundamental research. And tomorrow, we'll continue to work toward a future that is powered in part by fusion energy. Fortunately, private sector investment in fusion research is already booming. It has reached nearly $3 billion in last year alone, and we've heard from professors that interest among students has never been higher, which is terrific. And that's why the Biden-Harris administration is aiming to capitalize on this moment. Today's announcement is a huge step forward uh, to the president's goal of achieve, achieving commercial fusion within a decade. But there's still a lot more to do so much more. We'll continue to work uh, toward that goal and find other ways to progress to reach fusion energy. So for example, in September, the Department of Energy made a $50 million investment for public-private partnerships to start working toward uh, fusion pilot plant designs. And we're partnering with the Office of Science and Technology Policy to map out the president's bold vision for driving that commercial fusion in the next decade with the highest safety standards, with cost-effective, equitable uh, deployment that positions American businesses to lead and communities to thrive, and with a skilled workforce that's diverse and inclusive. This is what it looks like for America to lead, and we're just getting started. 
Another big congratulations to Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Their team is here. Where are you, team? There you are. Uh, and they'll be, yes. They'll be joining us uh, after this for a technical panel for those of you who wish to stay uh, to learn more. Um, big applause and thank you to the NNSA, the National Nuclear Security Administration. <laughs> and everybody who has been involved in this fusion breakthrough that will go down in the history books. You're going to hear more about the details of the experiment from Administrator Ruby and Director Badil. But first, I'm going to turn it over to the President's Science Advisor and Director of the OSTP, uh, Dr. Arati Prabhakar. Thank, Dr. You. Thank you so much. Thanks, Secretary Granholm. What a pleasure to be invited to come celebrate this amazing moment here at the Department of Energy. Um, it's really a privilege to be here. So when I heard this news, <clears throat> for me, the years fell away, and all of a sudden it was 1978. <clears throat> I was a summer student in the middle of my college years, 19-year-old uh, kid, and I got the chance to go work at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And I showed up. And so you got to picture this, I'm wearing my bell bottoms, I've got long black hair, and I show up and I'm a 19-year-old kid and they give me a laser to work on. And I said, this is cool, I like lasers, but what, what, like, what's this laser all about? And they said, we think that if you point enough lasers at a pellet of fuel, we want to see if we can get more energy released from fusion than the amount of energy that the lasers deliver into that pellet. And I said, well, that's cool. And I spent three months uh, working on this fun laser. And, you know, and after my adventure with the laser that summer in Livermore ended, I went off and did completely unrelated things. But I have always kept an eye out and watched to see what was happening at Livermore as they pursued uh, this idea of ignition, of achieving this kind of controlled fusion reaction for decades. And um, I, I went off and didn't do anything more about fusion, but the people I worked with and their successors kept going. And they went through periods of triumph, and they went through tremendous struggles and setbacks. They never lost sight of this goal. And last week, lo and behold, indeed, they shot a bunch of lasers at a pellet of fuel, and more energy was released from that fusion ignition than, than the energy of the lasers going in. And, and I just think this is such a tremendous example of what perseverance really can achieve. And I had the great pleasure of meeting the team, whom you'll talk with when you hear uh, the panel in a little while. And they have come from many different parts of the world. They've studied many different fields. Uh, many of them were summer students at Livermore, but decades after I was. So it took not just one generation, but generations of people pursuing this goal. And uh, it's a scientific milestone, scientific energy break even to achieve this. But of course, as with all of these kinds of complex scientific undertakings, it's also an engineering marvel uh, beyond belief. And, and this duality of advancing the research, building the complex engineering systems, both sides learning from each other, this is how we do really big, hard things. So this is just a, a beautiful example. So, um, you know, I, I also have been reflecting on how long the journey can be from knowing to doing, because it's a century since we figured out that it was fusion that was going on in, in, in our sun and all the other stars. And in that century, it took, it took so many different kinds of advances that ultimately came together to the point that we could replicate that fusion activity in this, in this controllable way in a laboratory. Uh, and, and I think it's just a reminder that sometimes even when we know something, it's a very long time before we can turn it into something that we can actually harness and start to be able to use. And as the secretary described, I think it's that, that, really, that prospect now is one step closer in a really uh, exciting way. Okay, so uh, you know, let me just finish by saying I think this is an, an amazing example of the power of America's research and development enterprise. This is what the Department of Energy works every day to support and to drive. 
It's what our Office of Science and Technology Policy at the White House focuses on every day is how do we strengthen and advance this enterprise. And it is an enterprise that the President, President Biden, has championed in a way that no one really ever has before. He submitted the, the, a budget for supporting federal R&D that is the biggest ever uh, that we've had in this country. And so I want to take a moment and congratulate the entire Department of Energy with Secretary Granholm's tremendous leadership, um, the, nuclear, the National Nuclear Security Administration here that has championed this effort for so long, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and especially and particularly all the scientists and engineers uh, across many years uh, who got us to this moment. President Biden loves to say that the one word that defines America is possibilities. And this is such a wonderful example of a possibility realized, a scientific milestone achieved, and uh, a road ahead to the possibilities uh, of, for clean energy and even deeper understanding uh, of the scientific um, uh, principles that are at play here. So thanks again, congratulations, and uh, all the best uh, from the White House. And now, thank you. Thanks so much. And now it's my privilege to get to introduce Jill Ruby. She is the Undersecretary for Nuclear Security here at the Department of Energy and also the Administrator of NNSA. Well, good morning. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Prubakar for joining NNSA to celebrate our incredible achievement. And thank you, Secretary Granholm, for kicking us off and being such a tremendous supporter of science. This success would not be possible without the strong support for foundational research by the US government and by the sustained investment in our national laboratories. Monday, December 5th, 2022, was an important day in science. Reaching ignition in a controlled fusion experiment is an achievement that has come after more than 60 years of global research, development, engineering, and experimentation. The people at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's National Ignition Facility reached this ignition milestone because of the work others did before them, their analysis of data and models, their continued pursuit to have the best possible facility, and their sheer excellence and grit. I would like to thank the members of Congress, thank you so much for being here today, that supported the National Ignition Facility because your belief in the promise of visionary science has been critical for our mission. I'd also like to thank the international partners that worked with us on this because their collaboration demonstrates the power and possibility of advancing scientific pursuits. But finally, a giant thank you to the talented federal defense programs and national security enterprise teams that supported this work at Lawrence Livermore. We are so proud of the accomplishments of our Livermore's National Ignition Facility. The Nat... <clears throat> The National Ignition Facility is the world's largest and most energetic laser system. During experiments, 192 high energy lasers converge on a target about the size of a peppercorn, heating, the, heating a capsule of deuterium and tritium to over 3 million degrees Celsius and briefly simulating the conditions of a star. In achieving ignition, the researchers at Lawrence Livermore have opened a new chapter in NNSA's science-based stockpile stewardship program, enabling us to study new regimes. Along with this, we have taken the first tentative steps towards a clean energy source that could revolutionize the world. Early this, earlier this year, I had the uh, opportunity to remember the 30th anniversary of Divider, the last explosives nuclear weapons test conducted by the United States. And reflecting on Divider, I spoke of how, how far our stockpile stewardship program has come and in how many ways we now understand our nuclear weapons better than we did when we were testing. 
unlocking ignition at NIF will allow us to probe the extreme conditions found at the center of nuclear explosions and address significant long-standing stewardship questions. The unprecedented nature of reaching ignition confirms what I and previous administrators of the NNSA have been saying for decades. There is no more dedicated or more talented group of scientists in the world as it should be. The tireless efforts of thousands of people from around the national security enterprise, nuclear security enterprise and their predecessors are responsible for this breakthrough. We honor their intelligence, their commitment, and their determination. Going forward, we know we'll have, we will make further breakthroughs, we'll have further setbacks. But all of this is in the interest of promoting national security, pushing towards a clean energy future, and redefining, redefining the boundaries of what's possible. Thank you for being here. I'd like to introduce Marv Adams, the Deputy Administrator for Defense Programs, to speak on this achievement. Thank you, Administrator Ruby. A paraphrasal of Abraham Lincoln strikes me as fitting here. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did at the National Ignition Facility. <laughs> so let's recap. A team at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, National Ignition Facility made the following happen. There's a tiny cylinder here at the end of this that you probably can't see. It's about so tall and this wide. Inside that was a, a small spherical capsule about half the diameter of a BB. 192 laser beams entered from the two ends of the cylinder and struck the inner wall. They didn't strike the capsule, they struck the inner wall of this cylinder and deposited energy. And that happened in less time than it takes light to move 10 feet, so it's kind of fast. X-rays from the wall impinged on the spherical capsule. Fusion fuel in the capsule got squeezed. Fusion reactions started. This had all happened before, 100 times before. But last week, for the first time, they designed this experiment so that the fusion fuel stayed hot enough, dense enough, and round enough for long enough that it ignited and it produced more energies than the lasers had deposited. About two megajoules in, about three megajoules out, a gain of 1.5. The energy production took less time than it takes light to travel one inch. Kind of fast. So this is pretty cool. Um, I have a special message to listeners who want to work on exciting, challenging, and important problems. We're hiring. <laughs> So, fusion, fusion is an essential process in modern nuclear weapons, and fusion also has the potential for abundant clean energy. As you have heard, and we'll hear more, the breakthrough at NIF <clears throat> does have ramifications for clean energy. More immediately, this achievement will advance our national security in at least three ways. First, it will lead to laboratory experiments that help NNSA defense programs continue to maintain confidence in our deterrent without nuclear explosive testing. Second, it underpins the credibility of our deterrent by demonstrating world-leading expertise in weapons-relevant weapons technologies. That is, we know what we're doing. Third, continuing to assure our allies that we know what we're doing and continuing to avoid testing will advance our nonproliferation goals, also increasing our national security. The achievement we celebrate today illustrates that big, important accomplishments often take longer and require more effort than originally thought, and that these accomplishments are often more than worth that time and effort that they took. With that, I would like to welcome my friend and colleague, Dr. Kim Budell, 
the director of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, to speak about her laboratory this evening. Madam Secretary, Dr. Prabhakar, Administrator Ruby, and Deputy Administrator Adams, thank you for your remarks today and for your support. This is a historic achievement for the team at Livermore, our collaborators in academia and labs in the U.S. and abroad, our industry partners, the fusion community writ large, and the many supporters and stakeholders in the National Nuclear Security Administration, the Department of Energy, and in Congress, who have ensured we could reach this moment, even when the going was tough. Over the past 60 years, thousands of people have contributed to this endeavor, and it took real vision to get us here. Building the National Ignition Facility was an enormous scientific and engineering challenge. I like Dr. Prabhakar's <laughs> emphasis on the importance of bringing those two together. In the end, after all that work, the laser has exceeded its performance goals, opened whole new areas of high energy density science to exploration, and delivered the data we need to keep our nuclear deterrent safe, secure, and effective. Our pursuit of fusion ignition over the past decade at NIF was an incredibly ambitious technical goal. Many said it was not possible. The laser wasn't energetic enough. The targets would never be precise enough. Our modeling and simulation tools were just not up to the task of this complex physics. Progress has taken time, but last August, when we achieved a then record yield of 1.35 megajoules, putting us at the threshold of ignition, many took notice. And last week, our pre-shot predictions, improved by machine learning and the wealth of data we've collected, indicated that we had a better than 50% chance of exceeding target gain of one. 60 years ago, when John Knuckles and his team proposed that lasers could be used to pr produce fusion ignition in the laboratory, it was beyond audacious. The laser had just been invented and was far from the mature tool we know today. But this is really what national labs are for, tackling the most difficult scientific challenges head on, learning from the inevitable setbacks, and building toward the next idea. Lawrence Livermore has been at the center of the ICF community across these many decades, and ICF has been a centerpiece of our lab. Indeed, people often say that LLNL stands for lasers, lasers, nothing but lasers. <laughs> but I think our motto sums up our approach nicely, science and technology on a mission. This achievement opens up new scientific realms for us to explore and advances our capabilities for our national security missions. It demonstrates the power of U.S. leadership in science and technology and shows what we're capable of as a nation. And as the Secretary mentioned, breakthroughs like this one have get generated tremendous excitement in the fusion community and a great deal of private sector investment in fusion energy. But this is only possible due to the long-term commitment of public investment in fusion science. The science and technology challenges on the path to fusion energy are daunting, but making the seemingly impossible possible is when we're at our very best. Ignition is a first step, a truly monumental one, that sets the stage for a transformational decade in high energy density science and fusion research, and I cannot wait to see where it takes us. Thank you. Thank you.